So you're thinking about selling on Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, or eBay? That's great, but make sure you don't get screwed by the tax man. My name is Ryan and I'm an attorney here at Gordon Law. I'll help you learn about some of the basics of dealing with Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, and eBay, and the tax implications that come with it. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. So let's start off talking about Facebook Marketplace. You might not know this, but there's two different parts to Facebook Marketplace. So the first part of Facebook Marketplace is local. Local Facebook Marketplace is where you post something for sale and you end up meeting up with somebody in person. It's your responsibility to report if there's any gains or losses, and Facebook doesn't really get involved. The second is called Sell with Shipping. This is where you post something for sale that can be shipped anywhere in the world. When using Sell with Shipping, you can expect Facebook to get more involved in the transaction. One of the big ways that you can expect them to get involved is that they'll issue out a 1099 either miscellaneous or a 1099K. So the 1099 miscellaneous would just show any gross receipts from people who pay using a bank account. Whereas a 1099K is gonna show gross receipts from people who used a third party card, such as a debit card or credit card. So both of these 1099 forms are gonna be really important when it comes to filing your taxes at the end of the year. Both of them will be needed to actually report what your income is to the IRS. What's really important is when you're using sell with shipping is you have to provide a tax identification number to Facebook. A tax identification number can either be your social security number or an employer identification number if you're a business. This is important so that Facebook can properly report any income earned. If Facebook doesn't get that, you won't get paid. One of the benefits of using sell with shipping on Facebook is that they'll take care of any sales tax. Another platform some of you might use would be eBay to sell items. To be perfectly honest, eBay is a pretty straightforward platform. You pretty much just list your item and sell. Then at the end of the year, they'll send you a tax form. Just like with Facebook, you can expect eBay to send you one of those 1099 miscellaneous or 1099K forms whenever you're selling items. This means that you'll also need to provide eBay with that tax identification number we talked about earlier eBay will collect and send off sales tax to the appropriate state. One thing to keep in mind with eBay is that if you're selling internationally, you might have other responsibilities for duties and imports. Finally, some of you might prefer to use Etsy. While Etsy is a great place to sell things, it's not always as tax friendly. Etsy will still track your sales and issue you out one of those 1099 miscellaneous or K forms at the end of the year, but Etsy won't touch sales tax. It's completely the seller's responsibility to determine if they have to collect and remit sales tax. The seller would need to register with his or her state in order to collect and remit the sales tax properly. Thankfully, Etsy does make it easy to add on by making it a setting in your user profile. So it's now the end of the year, and what do you do with these 1099 miscellaneous and 1099K forms? You can either try reporting them on your tax return yourself, or you can contact a tax professional like us here at Gordon Law for help. When reporting those forms, it's very important to know the difference between a hobby and an actual business. The biggest difference between a hobby and a business is the ability to deduct expenses. If you're just a hobby, you have to report your gross income on your tax return. If you're a business, you can take that gross income and deduct out any expenses related to that income. Then you only have to pay taxes on your net earnings. If you're just starting out, you can classify yourself as a business. The IRS has a test where they need to see a profit for three out of the last five years in order to classify it as a business. But just keep in mind, if the IRS ever takes a look, they could reclassify it. So for example, let's say you have a record that you bought for $2 and you just sold it online for 10. You'd think you have an $8 profit, but if you're considered hobby income, you're gonna to have to pay tax on the whole $10. If you're a business, you can deduct the $2 it costs to buy the record and then any other expenses, such as the fees for the listing site, maybe a portion of your internet, maybe a portion of your cell phone bill. If you're large enough, maybe even a portion of your home office. You can quickly see that there's a benefit to being a business over having a hobby. As you can tell, selling on Facebook, eBay, and Etsy can be quite rewarding, 
but it can also be quite challenging for taxes. If you're feeling uneasy about it, be sure to contact a tax professional like us here at Gordon Law, and we'll be happy to help. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment down below if you've ever had to deal with taxes when selling on eBay, Etsy, or Facebook. I'm Ryan, and I'll see you guys next time.